Hi, everybody, and welcome to this monthly roundtable with WordLift. Today, we're with Dorid Haddad, creating multilingual product knowledge graphs for large e-commerce sites. Absolutely lovely to have you here, Dorit. Thanks, Jason. Thanks for the welcome. Brilliant. A oh, quick hello, and we're good to go. Welcome to the show, Dorit Haddad. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. You've heard that song before. Yeah, yeah, um, I heard it. Yeah, well, my first reaction to this title was I don't have any, a large e-commerce site. I don't even have an e-commerce site. So why would this be of interest to me? And then I realized that this is basically Google heading towards really understanding the e-commerce space uh, to challenge Amazon better. But in fact, it's going to understand the entire world in this manner. So looking at how it's understanding e-commerce sites today and how it understood companies on Google Maps previously is a mm -hmm. great way to look at how it's going to be understanding the world in the future and where search is headed, where Google is headed with its idea of building one massive knowledge graph that contains all the information in the world, which is pretty ambitious and they will never get there, but that won't stop them trying, will it? Exactly, exactly. It's all, I mean, it's a game of data. So let's start. It would be very interesting yep. diving in all this information and see how Google is always hungry for data and what we have to do in order to get, I mean, our goals. It's a game of data. And, and from what I understand, I mean, I, I know that WordLift is all about data and you've been at WordLift yes. a few years now and you've become a, a, a data geek, have you? Yeah, exactly. So I moved, let's say, from the classic SEO staff to something more deep working more on data because all the search engines are going in this directory. And I believe they are the future. Indeed, exactly. You're in exactly the right space and you're super duper intelligent. You really know your stuff. And today you're going to teach me absolutely loads about building a knowledge graph for e-commerce sites, multilingual, large or not. Off you go. Exactly. So we will start, I mean, with the basic stuff. So starting from a simple uh, example, how we can build the data, then we will move, of course, I mean, how we can handle this with multi-lingual uh, sites, with sites, I mean, with a lot of versions and separate divisions for each country. So starting first, I mean, um, by the big announcement, I mean, uh, it's not a new, we, we have two years from uh, the day that Google has announced that, Google Shopping is free for everyone. So now it's free to sell on Google. So the question here that comes uh, to everyone, why Google, I mean, is doing this move? So mm -hmm. why after eight years, I believe from uh, adopting the pay for play model, I believe um, since 2013, 14, something like this. And mm -hmm. finally in uh, 2020, Google has decided to open this uh, shopping area for everyone. Uh, starting from the business model from uh, for for each company, I mean Google and Amazon. Google has uh, recognized that in some way they were losing the uh, market for for Amazon because Amazon had became the new search engine for the products. Right. So it took yeah. them a little bit of time because they didn't realize quite how powerful Amazon were becoming. I mean, from my perspective, I remember saying a couple of years ago talking to Andrea is that Amazon. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Google have got the, the whole path to the purchase, but Amazon have got the purchase. And that's a huge, huge hole for Google. Exactly. And Amazon becomes also a kind of search engine because they have a lot of stuff inside. And uh, taking it from a client perspective, I mean, for me as a client, I don't care from where I get the product. It's important that I get the product. And when, when Google was... Uh, showing the results on uh, on Google Shopping only for uh, payment results, this area has been uh, dominated by the big companies because they have a bigger budget. Right. So the small retailer, they have no space. I mean, the small retailer has no space to, to, to meet with these big companies that have a very bigger budget. But for me as a client, I mean, I don't care if the mm. product that I'm getting I'm getting from a big company or from a small retailer. And here, if we think about uh, the shipping uh, time, for example, and how much it costs, I mean, the same product, I can get it from uh, a big retailer or I can get it even from a local one who is near me. 
So it's better that I get it from the one because it will cost me less, maybe. And Google has understood this. I mean, Google has said, okay, now it's the time to open this shopping area for everyone because we need all the information, not only from the big companies, even they have a good amount of uh, their revenue that came from uh, shoppings, that came from the ads. Sure. But I mean, from, 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 from my personal kind of point of view is I kind of think, oh, I'll just go to Amazon because I know I'll find it. I know it's going to be relatively okay. simple. And when I go to Google, I know that it's going to be quite complicated sorting through all the different information because Amazon's product knowledge graph is incredibly well organized and Google's product knowledge graph is incredibly badly organized. Exactly, exactly. And today we will see how Google is trying to organize everything and how we can... Uh, use this uh, structure, I mean, in order to get into Google Shopping. Because finally, Google is huge. I mean, even yeah. if Amazon is more organized uh, from this aspect, but Google is a huge and there is a lot of opportunities. I mean, it's a completely new area. And till today, there are a lot of e-commerce websites which are not uh, using this, this all those features that Google is giving and yeah. they're still doing uh, the stuff in the classic way. Right. Yeah. And, and as a, an e-commerce platform, as a retailer, how can I leverage this competition between Google and Amazon? I mean, Amazon, I, I've, I've, as an e-commerce company, sorry, I would tend to think, well, I need an Amazon shop front. Are they mutually exclusive? Uh, no, I mean, uh, there is something very important here because, I mean, when I sell on Amazon, I have to respect Amazon standard. But finally, mm. the seller is Amazon. This is a very important point. On the other side, when I sell on Google, the data is mine. So I have my website, I have my channels, I have much more flexibility compared with Amazon. So for me, it will be quite strategic to sell there because I have the control on all the data that I have. I only need to reorganize it in order to make it more understandable by the search engine, but the data is mine. Right. I mean, yeah, so you, you get both Amazon and Google. But if you're a large e-commerce site, as you say, you've got your data. All you need to do is package it up and present it to Google in a manner that it can use it to make it as user friendly as Amazon is today. And Google exactly. at some point will become as powerful as Amazon and as user friendly as Amazon, but with a bigger database since they're looking at the entire web and Amazon are by definition limited. Exactly. And the funny thing that we find in a lot of e-commerce is that the data is there. They have the data. <laughs> I mean, yeah. everything is there, but they are not providing it in the, to the search engine in the correct way. So they have something very valuable, but they are not using the power of this uh, information that they have. I get the feeling that most businesses have got the data somewhere and they're mm. not using it as well as they possibly could, um, even within just everyday websites like calicube.com. Uh, we're actually using WordLift and we're just picking that up a notch on our own website and we're going to push through using WordLift to see to what extent we can leverage the data we have within our own website much, much, much better. And I'm really excited, but that's not the topic for today. Back to Google Shopping. Sorry, it's not even Google Shopping, is it? It, it is Google Shopping, excuse me. Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's uh, move forward to the next slide. Ooh, so here I, I recognize mean, that. Yeah. <laughs> So here, I mean, we have, um, I made a simple research for Adidas on, uh, on Amazon. And uh, what I want to show here, I mean, the amount of information that Amazon is presenting on their uh, product page. Because mm -hmm. this is exactly the information that we want to provide the, to the search engine. So looking, I mean, at this uh, page, we see, for example, all the images that we have for each product. So this is one thing. The same stuff that can, we can do by providing all the images even for Google, because I mean, what we see that a lot of uh, e-commerce websites, they have all the images, but for example, on the structured data, they're providing only one. Instead, they mm -hmm. have all these uh, images with those different dimensions. So we can do a lot of stuff just by starting by the images. Moving forward, we see, I mean, other information like the reviews, uh, another information like uh, the price, the brand, the model, the color, the manufacturer, the shipping details, for example, the delivery times, and also the related products. So we have a lot of information, a very rich user experience we can get from this page. 
And what we want to do is uh, redoing the same thing using, I mean, Google standards. So mm-hmm. all the information that we get from this page can be collected and also can be reused according to Google standard. And this is basically what Google is trying to do with, uh, uh, with, with, the, with, the, with Google Shopping. So when Google asks the merchant fee, they are asking for a similar information. And the goal is to provide a better user experience for the customers, for the shoppers. So here we can see also what, what Google is doing. So if we look to the filters, for example, on the, on the um, left side, so we see, for example, filters like the price, uh, the type of the product, the brand, the category, all this information. And basically those are the same information that Google is asking in the merchant fee. So more details we can provide the search engine with related for any property. I mean, uh, regardless of the dimension of the product or the category or the color, all this information, uh, if we are able to provide it to the search engine, of course, the search engine will be able to use it and will uh, show the correct product to the correct user. So it's very easy. More information, that means a better uh, data qualification and a better user experience, I, I can get exactly that user that I need to bring it to my website because I have all the information that he was asking about in his research. And we see, for example, in the, uh, the top part of the, of the page, the, um, the payment results. So you see, I mean, right now, before it was all payment, now we only have, I mean, uh, this part and everything under it is organic. So we have a lot of right. opportunity there to, to use. Okay, yeah, I mean, so the, the, the top part in red is the ads and the rest is organic. And what I notice here as well is that we've got a presentation that is like Amazon, but actually I find this clearer and um, more agreeable than the Amazon presentation, which I've never really liked very much. And the other thing is that I notice that the photos are all very different. And a lot of of e-commerce sites use the standard photo that's provided to them by the manufacturer. Um, From that perspective, I would imagine that they have the lady at the bottom in the left-hand corner taking your own photo, providing your own photo, adding it to the schema markup and to the merchant feed must be a huge advantage. Exactly. Not only the photos, we also we try to uh, generate a, the different dimension from the same photo. So we have one one, we have the four three, we have sixteen right. one. So all the dimension, because Google will not only use this information for Google Shopping, but they can also show the information. I mean, on the normal search, or they can also uh, show the information on the image search. Because I mean, a lot of products can be searched by images. So if we are able to provide all the dimensions. Uh, of the same photo, this also will be a huge advantage because we can, I mean, get more uh, opportunities on different SERPs. Right, yeah, and that that goes into Google Lens. I mean, I know Microsoft do it very well, is you take a photo and you say, find me necklaces like this or socks like that. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it's simple. More more information, more data related to the photos, I mean, the more ranking opportunities we get. Brilliant, wonderful. I like photos. Sorry, carry on, please. Yeah, let me go on. So now, I mean, we will move to see how we can build knowledge graph. So, I mean, the opportunities are clear that the competition between Amazon and Google is clear. So how we can collect the data in this uh, correct way where the search engine can understand everything and get all the information that, uh, that they need. We can do it, of course, I mean, by building the knowledge graph uh, behind the website uh, we are managing. So what are the information, I mean, uh, that the search engine asking? I mean, everything related to uh, product markup. So right. all the properties that we have there. So, I mean, starting from uh, uh, from the type, for example, the category, uh, the brand of the product, description of price, of course, uh, those are ABC stuff. Uh, mm-hmm. all the images, the offers, the prices, um, everything I mean, related to product markup, we can bring to, 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 uh, to our website, everything will be, will be, will be good for, for, for our markup. So um, that's right. I mean, just just re- really quickly, I mean, initially you were talking about the, the Google Merchant feed. Yeah. 
uh, now you're saying we have that information and we can now provide it as schema markup. Uh, exactly. And in fact, you stopped talking about Google and I noticed you switched to search engines. So we're including Bing um, and, and the other major, like DuckDuckGo potentially. Uh, right, all yeah. of these other search engines are using the same system of schema.org markup to understand your products. So I love the, the nice switch and it was very subtle from Google to search engines. Brilliant. Exactly. It's also not, of course, not only from Google. I mean, even the same uh, graph is ours. So we can also play with the data for our, uh, for other purposes. But I mean, basically there, when we speak about scale markup, we're speaking I mean, about the global standard for, uh, for the product markup, which has I mean, accepted by all the search engine. Yeah. I mean, good point. Brilliant. Uh, Wonderful. Yeah. Then, then of course, I mean, once we have all this information, we can start collect them together. For example, the category, I mean, it's something huge because, I mean, we know that a lot of uh, searches, it will not be done, I mean, using the product itself, but it will be searched by using the category. So if we are bringing the product markup and inside the product, we are mentioned the category with the URL of the category, this is another piece. So the search engine can also improve the ranking of the category itself because we are providing this information inside the product markup itself. The same thing for the image and the different dimensions. What, I mean, we, we already speak about it. So the different Im dimensions will, will lead yeah. to uh, ranking on, on different serps. Uh, I think the, the image size, the, the image ratios is vastly underrated in the sense that we tend to create images that correspond to our sites. Uh, but the main yeah. ones, you've got one to one, four to three, and 16 to nine. I mean, I remember doing a cartoon back in the uh, noughties, and four, three is the old TV format. Uh, exactly. One, one is square, and 16, nine is widescreen, basically. And exactly. creating an image that can be used and, and cut to make sense in all of those three different sizes is phenomenally important. We've done it at CaliCube. Uh, I believe WordLift does that automatically for you as well. Yeah. But thinking about that ahead is incredibly powerful because it saves you so much work. Yeah, imagine, I mean, usually when we start uh, with e-commerce, we have only one featured image, only one. Mm. So we bring it and after we generate the three dimensions of these uh, images and after we add all the other images that they are there, I mean, in the CMS, so basically, I mean, we, we end up with with 30 images, which is, I mean, great because this is a very nice piece for the search engine. And when they see it, I mean, the whole game will change after because there is a lot of data. Right. Yeah. And, and what, what you're doing there is making the search engine's life easy by providing all the formats it will need. And exactly. a lot of this, what I call packaging for Google or packaging for Bing is making their life easy, making it easy for them to understand, making it easy for them to use and to present to the subset of its users, who are your audience? And now we're looking at brand, which I love. Now Prada, I would never wear, but that's a different question. <laughs> yeah, I mean, here we have also uh, another uh, kind of uh, presenting information because here, I mean, in addition to the information that we have in our uh, CMS, we can also make a connection with an external mm -hmm. Uh, data set. Uh, so if I have a brand, I mean, I'm selling this, this, this brand and this brand is famous and it's already there in Wikidata, I can add the same as for the brand itself until the search engine looks. This brand that I have is the same as this one. And this way we can do a kind of uh, data merging, a graph merging between the right. information that we have in our graph and also the stuff that we have, I mean, outside like Wikipedia, Wikidata, DBpedia, all this information. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so basically connecting what you have in your page to things that Google already knows and recognizes to help it to understand exactly what it is you're offering. Exactly, exactly. And then we end up with this product markup. And of course, I mean, search engines are hungry for data. So more data that we can provide, the better it. And we have also, I mean, the standard for everything. So. The information like the SKU, the GTIN, the model, the size, they have schema for everything and they need information, I mean, uh, from all those properties. The reviews, for example, are quite important. The shipping details as well, especially, I mean, if you have a competitive uh, shipping details, I mean, you, you can provide mm -hmm. this piece of information because if you are able to deliver the, the, the product in very fast way, 
this will be, I mean, quite important to show on the search engine. And it's also, it influences too much on the uh, decision of the client itself. If they are able to see how much time they, they, they when they can get the product. I mean, it's completely sure. another, another, another game. Yeah, two things strike me there. Number one is that shipping details is fundamentally important in Google's competition with Amazon. Because yeah. my, I think of Amazon, I think one day shipping, two day shipping, three, three day shipping. They've nailed my opinion of their capacity to ship. And what we need to do is allow Google to make that same promise directly on the SERP if we can deliver. And the mm -hmm. second is that reviews in Amazon are direct, directly injected into Amazon. Google doesn't have that advantage. So you need to present the reviews that you have from your customers about your products so that Google has that same information and can better analyze it. Exactly. Shipping details and reviews are a game changer. We have another uh, very important property, which is also a game changer, but we will speak it. Uh, yeah. We'll speak about it after in, in the webinar. Okay, so basically this is, I mean, what we do with, with WordLift. So when we dive deep into the power of data of e-commerce, I mean, uh, our, our goal is always building this product knowledge graph. So in addition to add the product markup, I mean, this is something that we do with WordLift. We, we can, we build a data set that contains all this information and this data set is recruitable by the search engine. So they can find in addition to the product mar markup that we publish on the page, this data set that, I mean, it's a kind of a portfolio that contains all the information that we have. So they will not only, I mean, get the information from the page itself, but mm -hmm. they can also start understanding the relations between the different uh, products that we have on our websites, especially when we use a property like related product, for example, mm -hmm. this is important. Uh, when we use the category property inside the product itself, they can understand what is the relation there between the product and the category. Of course, all this information are crucial because they can also uh, be able to show the correct SERP for uh, to, to, to cover that exact, I mean, user intent. So more information, I mean, uh, we can explain to the search engine about the relations between the different products, categories, uh, different properties that we have in our website. Of course, the better uh, qualified uh, traffic we can get from the search engine. Yeah, right. And and once again, this comparison with Amazon and Google is, is really interesting because Amazon gives me a very good list of related products that I might potentially yeah. be interested in. And Google isn't very good at that yet. And as e-commerce sites, we can present through the structured data our expert recommendation, which is independent, whereas Amazon is always trying to drive sales, we're, we can actually give an independent evaluation of what might be a related product and help Google actually give a better potential exactly. service to its user than Amazon. Yeah, and it's also the game of winning the trust of Google because, I mean, yeah. the data of Amazon is there. They, they own their data and they can Brilliant. play with the data as they prefer. They have everything. Mm. But on our side, I mean, the data is not there for Google. The data is ours. And we are trying to provide it for the search engine. So if we are able to provide it in a perfect way, then the search engine can trust it. And then our life will be much more easier because we get the trust left of Google so we can play it as we prefer. Right. Yeah. And you've, you've highlighted personal digital assistance. That's just drawn my attention from the idea that Amazon haven't nailed that yet. And Google mm -hmm. haven't nailed that yet. And that's an opportunity for Google to actually be ahead of Amazon if they can yeah. get this right. So that might potentially be the reason they unlocked all of this in 2020, because this is an opportunity where they can actually get the jump on yeah, Amazon. You can do, I mean, crazy stuff with the knowledge graph. I will give you an example. One thing that we've been, I mean, experimenting lately on a large e-commerce website, after we build, I mean, the, the product knowledge graph for all the products that they have, I mean, thousands of products, we started creating descriptions for those product using the same uh, schema properties that we have. Mm -hmm. And it's crazy good because uh, you are bringing all the features, so you have all the information like right. the color, the sizes, uh, all this stuff, the model, and after you can kind of uh, educate, I mean, the, the AI to, to write the description in a specific way using those uh, SEO, let's say, uh, properties, because, I mean, finally you want to write a description, which is SEO optimized, so that that can cover right. the properties 
that the users are searching for and they can push it to the description. And all this information can came from the same uh, product markup that uh, product knowledge graph that you created before. Which, which is brilliant. And that brings a couple of points to mind to me is it, like the photos, a lot of e-commerce sites copy paste the manufacturer's description. So they're all the same. Yeah. And if you get somebody to write one for you, they don't necessarily put in the description, the information that the user is looking for. They exactly. put it in from their point of view. Um, and the third thing is those reviews. I mean, we, we talk about the attributes and the, and the properties, both this description that you're talking about and also the reviews that people write are the way that Google can educate itself about the tiny details that make all the difference to each individual person when they're searching for a product. Exactly, exactly. So, I mean, more information we, we, we can get inside the knowledge graph, of course. I mean, after everything would be much more easier. <laughs> Brilliant. So build your knowledge graph and feed it to Google. Exactly. Okay, so how much uh, we can get on Google with a product knowledge graph? I mean, here, here we see how, how Google is distributing all the information. <laughs> Which yeah, is the, answer, the answer to how much can you get in there is a lot. But I made yeah. that joke last time we had this conversation. <laughs> exactly, a lot. So I mean, if, if, we, if we look only to the product, uh, no, uh, the product knowledge panel that mm -hmm. Google is showing for some products, you see, I mean, they are bringing information from many websites. So they are bringing their views from websites. They are bringing the images from another website. Uh, they are showing, I mean, features and the features like, I mean, the model, the manufacturer. They are showing the images. So they are collecting information from uh, a lot of entry points, a lot of a lot of websites, and after they are presenting it to to the final user. So this is a very rich user experience. I mean, for me, if I'm able to get to one of these, uh, I mean, uh, feature that Google is showing, I mean, it's it's, it's quite cool because I can sure. get to the product knowledge graph, and from the product knowledge graph, I can get a huge amount of traffic. Right, yeah, and, and from a user perspective here, I can actually research the entire product in one page, much like I would on Amazon. But this, to me, is a nicer interface than Amazon. And secondly, although it's still Google, so it's not completely independent, it's more independent as an analysis than Amazon are going to give me. Yeah, exactly, because, I mean, here we, we have many, many websites, and uh, mm. the data, I mean, it, could, could be bigger because I mean they are not limited to 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 the same platform that they have, but they are bringing it on multiple platforms. They Absolutely. they are kind of trying in a way make everything easy. I mean when when Google has uh, announced the the Google Pay for example, they are trying even to make it more easier for the person so you can have a similar user experience like Amazon because all people can pay in the same way for example. So to make I mean the the the, the payment. Uh, method much more easier and more trustable by 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 uh, by person. So this is a good thing, a good move. But of course, the data is coming from the websites, from our websites. Right, brilliant. Well, as a huge knowledge panel fan, and I'm currently writing my knowledge panel course, which doesn't include include products. But this for me is a beautiful thing. Yeah, exactly. It shows in very clear way the importance of working on the data. I mean, it's yeah. all about data. Yeah. Brilliant, wonderful, okay. Okay, moving forward. Now we were going to speak about a very important piece. Uh, this is the property that I've been mentioning before without seeing the name of the property. It's right. the GTIN. So um, when, when we speak, I mean, about the GTIN, the, the global trade item number, I mean, it's a kind of a passport for your product. So, I mean, if you notice that um, on different products, we have this barcode that contains, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, a series of numbers. This is a unique thing. And uh, when, when uh, people provide the GTIN, they will get a lot of uh, trust by, 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 by Google. And Google, I mean, itself, they, 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 they ask to uh, identify this, uh, this property. And in the documentation, I mean, it's enough to read the documentation of Google about mm -hmm. this product to understand how much is important. Right. So just, just, just to be really clear, the, the GTIN is not the same thing as the barcode. The GTIN is a different but unique identifier of each individual product. Exactly, but you can read it from the barcode. So, oh, right. I mean, okay. 
yeah exactly so if you if you bring the barcode and you read it for the device you can get i mean this uh, this gtin it's a okay. unique identifier. right the but barcode can... will contain more information but the gtin is in there yeah exactly right okay and there are companies who are specialized in i mean in uh, providing gtin of, of course i mean big big e-commerce websites i mean they, they would have the gtin of course i mean right uh, uh, when we speak yep. about the big e-commerces with uh, multi-versions, multilinguals, so they will have the GTIN. But not only this, I mean, sometimes uh, you can use the GTIN to bring uh, traffic from a uh, person who are physically in the shop. So All right. with, yeah, yeah, I mean, with, with, your, with your phone, if you are, I mean, uh, bringing the information from the barcode, you can get also a link that bring the users for the page on the website. So it can oh, be- Oh, right, yeah, those, those, those QR code square things. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Brilliant. And I was looking there, you're, you're showing a book, which is an ISBN, which is a different type of number specifically for books. And what I find when I'm building knowledge panels for books, which I do at CaliCube, is that people get confused that there are multiple ISBNs for one individual book, and they don't realize that it's different editions of the book. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, even um, on the documentation of Google, everything is clear. We have a GTIN, but we have also different, I mean, kinds of GTIN. But all of them, they can they can be specified uh, according to the product markup. So if you are providing right. GTIN 8 or 12 or 13, I mean, the most important thing that the search engine is able to see this piece of information because it yeah. will act as a kind of a unique identifier. So it's a passport for your uh, product. And it can also be used, I mean, after we will see it in details, with uh, uh, multilingual uh, websites. It's Brilliant. the only thing that will never change. So mm -hmm. if you are adding it, everything will be, will be clear for search engine. Right. Yeah, I just got a, a vision in my head of people going through passport control. And some people are waiting in the queue where the, where the, the person actually has to look Thank at you. it. And some people are shooting through the the. the the, the system with the automatic reg recognition, you want to be in the automatic reg recognition queue. Exactly, the automatic uh, recognition. Uh, you will not make <laughs> the search engine so hard to understand what is the product that you are providing. You are Brilliant. Already Super. Okay, so how, how we can give a password for our e-commerce and how we can use it, I mean, in this situation. Mm. Here, I mean, the, the, the importance of the GTIN is huge because it will uh, be used a kind of unique identifier. So it's similar to the health line, basically. Okay, so as we are using the health line, I mean, we are putting everything I mean, on our page source to tell the surgeon looks, this is the page in English, and those are, I mean, the different versions in uh, Germany and English US and the stuff. You can use the GTIN. If you are providing the GTIN in the product markup, then everything is okay. You are providing on English, uh, German, or French, any 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 uh, version of your websites. If the GTIN is there, the search engine can recognize the same product in the different uh, language versions using this this value. So it will be quite important, especially for the big e-commerce websites. Brilliant. Yeah, I mean, you're you're saying you said earlier on, like an a h ref, a h ref lang. Sorry, excuse me. Mean, meaning that you can actually change your description according to the culture of the language you're speaking when you're presenting it to the client, but always have that GTN ID and never throw Google a curveball because it can know that it's the same one, even though the description is quite different. Because simply it's unique, so it cannot be changed. So this is, the, uh, yeah. And in this way, I mean, it's, it's quite uh, huge important here because, I mean, everything is clear. I mean, that's yeah. sort of not wrong with it. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, for, for a machine, having a unique, unique ID for, for an entity, for a thing, for a product in this case, is phenomenally important. I think um, a lot of us would think, oh, that's a lot of effort to actually gather all that information, bring it all together, make sure it's included. Um, but it's a tiny amount of effort if we come back to that passport idea to avoid that incredibly long queue at the airport where somebody's stamping passports. Uh, once again, you want to be in that very quick queue where it's exactly. automatic. Exactly. Okay. Now we will move, I mean, to speak about something also important. So um, moving from the merchant feed to the product graph, this yep. is, I mean, a new feature also we, we've been working on Wordlift uh, lately. So 
we see that a lot of websites, uh, they have the merchant feed, but I mean, they don't uh, build that product uh, markup, even if the information, they, they have it there. So we find, I mean, that a lot of merchant feed properties are used also on the product markup. And here, if we are able to provide two entry points, two data entry points for the search engine, we have the merchant feed that is providing the already, I mean, the information for Google. And we are also building a product markup based on this merchant feed and we are publishing in our page. This also will be uh, will be better for the search engine. And the same Google, they, they were explaining it in many times and we have a lot of videos they've been publishing on right. YouTube that explaining exactly why they need two entry points and um, how they can use the data. Because here, I mean, we have two different mechanisms. We have that feed that is going uh, always using this uh, Google Shopping uh, channel, but mm -hmm. in the same time, if we are using the same data to publish on the page and we are enriching it because we know that on schema we can do other stuff that we cannot do with the merchant feed, this also will be a kind of confirmation for the search engine uh, about the data that we have on, on our blog. Right. And of course, the data should be synced be be between, between those right. two. Yeah, I anticipate you, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, no, 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 yes, 100%. It, it is that thing is we, we need to sync the data so that it always said the same thing on both sides so we don't contradict ourselves. Uh, but I was also going to ask, with the merchant feed, basically a lot of e-commerce sites, most e-commerce sites, all e-commerce sites potentially have a merchant feed. Mm -hmm. And you can use that to start building your knowledge graph. But what are, what are the first examples of, of attributes or properties that I would need to add to my knowledge graph that are missing from the merchant feed? Yeah, I mean, you can do a lot of stuff. I mean, like, for example, uh, we can use uh, extra properties like the audience, the color, the dimension of the product. I mean, uh, the related products, uh, the category. I mean, some of them are already there in the merchant field, but there are some something new that we can use it in different ways. So Brilliant. the shipping details, we can do a lot of stuff. I mean, with, with the schema that basically the merchant field is not covering uh, it. Great. Yep. Okay. So sch schema is wider, which is delightful. Yeah, exactly. We can do more more stuff with, with the schema because the motion feed is a standard thing. But the schema, I mean, you know, you can put a property inside a property inside a property. So you, you can you can play yep. a lot with the data. And schema markup A is public, i.e. all of the search engines are using it, whereas Google yes. Shopping, Google Merchant Feed is proprietary. And schema is growing all the time. There are additional attributes and types and uh, properties in schema markup all the time. It's constantly growing. Yeah, and here we have a very important update that show us also the importance of adding the structured data markup. Brilliant. This is a huge, this is a huge, because right now, uh, Google can use the same markup that we have on our pages to show mm. the results even inside the merchant. So it's it's big, it's big. This is only, I mean, I believe uh, some days ago, it's on the 13th of September. So, right. yeah. So right now, so, th Sorry, they released this last Tuesday and what they're saying is that you can use your schema markup and import it into a merchant feed. Exactly, so to show the information inside, I mean, the, inside the Google Shopping, they can also bring the information right now from the structured data itself. Which is big. I mean, this is this is quite big. So I no um, longer have any need to create a, a merchant feed. I, I still have to to create it. I believe. I mean, I mean, as the merchant is uh, immediate, okay, mm -hmm. because you know, I mean, right. you can provide the data using the APIs, which are much more faster than Google crawlers. Because with the right, product, yeah. you see, I mean, Google they they have to send the crawler and see all the information. So if the price are changing, I mean, if stuff are changing, you still have. Uh, to, to provide the motion feed. But if you are not providing the motion feed and you have already the structured data there, it's also, I mean, something that can be used by the search engine. Right, brilliant. And I think it's really important to remember, as you said, that the merchant feed is a, a direct flow into the machine in real time. And the schema markup is always going to be based on the fact that the machine crawls that information, digests that information, and then, if I may say, regurgitates it into the um, into the system. So there's always a time lag with schema markup, whereas the merchant feed is direct and real time. Yeah, but this move, I mean, Google, it explains in a very clear way that you need to get both. 
because right. I mean, okay. it's, it's quite important to have also the product markup in addition to the motion feed because you can play a lot. And as you mentioned, it's not only for Google that can be used by the other search engines. Right, brilliant. So if you didn't like schema markup before, you have to like it now. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> brilliant, wonderful. Okay, so um, what, what, what are we looking at now in terms of, I mean, the mechanism... For, for making sure that it is now um, reconciled and harmonized is the word you're using, is that you really should be basing your system on the idea of building schema markup, building your own internal knowledge graph, and everything else flows from there. Exactly, exactly. Once okay. we are able to, to provide this, I mean, this product knowledge graph with all the information that we have, I mean, trying to enrich it with all this information, then uh, we, we can get a better better uh, results. We can get our qualified traffic and try. We need to try always to provide a lot of uh, properties because uh, each one of these uh, property is covering a different user intent. Right. Yeah. So I mean, you could actually look at the properties and attributes that we keep providing them. Uh, we, the more we provide, the more we're going to be hitting the long tail. So that's a bit like hitting the long tail keyword idea. Exactly. Exactly because you're uh, giving Google the information where it can serve a very specific need. And exactly. even if you're not going to get 50,000 people asking for the specific blue headphones, wireless, uh, size 12 and a half uh, with a red dot in the middle, you're going to get one every year, and that's going to be for the rest of the existence of your company. Yeah, yeah. Even, I mean, the users are always trying to find more specific information. So yeah. in the future, this will be more enriched. We cannot uh, expect that Google will not ask more and more properties. They will always be asking new properties. And as we see in the last two years, we have a lot of updates on, on the product markup. I mean, each Brilliant. year we have new stuff and Google will always ask for a new stuff to add for this product markup. So right. we, we, should, we should be prepared. Yeah, I don't know where the red dot in the middle of the headphones comes from. I'm sure that's never going to be a property. Okay. Red dot in the middle of my headphones. Uh, I think I might be going slightly, slightly crazy the more I look at schema markup. So you've yeah. got another another slide with an example that was really exciting because it it yeah. kind of looked it, it kind of looked to me like it was it was bad, then it went good, then it went bad again. But that's not the case, is it? Exactly. I mean, this is a very realistic uh, situation. So here we have, I mean, a big e-commerce websites. And we see uh, before creating the knowledge graph and how, and after creating the knowledge graph, how, how, how things is going. So the interesting thing here is uh, on this websites, we had already a product markup. So, I mean, if you, if you, if you look uh, to the period before, before March, for example, the markup right. was there. So Google was able to see it. Even, I mean, the number of the dedicated product was even uh, bigger than the number that we have after uh, publishing the markup. So what we're doing here is uh, rebuilding the markup that we have on this website by adding additional properties. Mm -hmm. So we add all the images that we were speaking about. We add the reviews. Uh, we add, I mean, uh, all the uh, product properties like the audience, uh, the product dimensions. All this information wasn't there, or some of them were there. I mean, in, in the in the old markup, and uh, after we 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 remove the old markup and we uh, get live with the with the new markup, which is I mean much more enriched, and we see a big a big uh, difference because I mean if you look to the number of impressions, I mean it's crazy how mm -hmm. was it moving from the old situation, I mean to to the new one. And this explains very clear way how much important to add the data and how much important to qualify the data that we have. Right. Yeah. No. I mean, no, I understand you. that. That. That's. That's a, a, the literal hockey stick, and it's absolutely delightful. And the other thing that strikes me here is you've got lots of yellow, which are warnings. And I yeah. think a lot of people freak out about warnings, thinking that it's invalid, but that isn't the case. What do yeah, warnings exactly. basically say? Yeah. Google has it changed. This is, I mean, the screenshot is uh, from months ago, but right now Google has it changed and now you see everything in green. Right, okay. But from, from that perspective, sometimes Google will trigger a warning and a warning isn't an error. It's just saying exactly. we would prefer to have had this piece of information. Yeah, we know, we know, I mean, that uh, not only e-commerce will be able to provide uh, all the properties. So this warning 
uh, I mean, it's a normal thing. This is the reason why I was, I mean, speaking a very realistic uh, yeah. case, because, I mean, we know that we will not be able to provide reviews for 62.7K products. Right. Yeah, but um, anyway, we're still getting the value. Anyway, we, we yeah. are getting more impressions and more traffic. Sure. So, I mean, basically, the, the key point here is when you um, consolidate your scheme markup, make it richer, add additional information, as many um, attributes and um, the images as possible to get the machine to understand exactly what it is you're offering and to whom it might be helpful, the machine will reward you with this Absolutely. carrot system that Andrea Volpini from WordLift loves to talk about. It gives you the carrot and the carrot is there. Give me more scheme markup. I will give you much, much, much more visibility. Exactly. That's it. Brilliant. Wonderful. Uh, is that the last slide in the presentation? Yeah, exactly. This is the last slide. Great stuff. That was absolutely delightful. Um, we recorded it once already. That was last week. And um, we were together in the room and we didn't get the sound quite right. We had a big audience. We had lots of questions, lots of things flashing up on the screen with messages of hello from Jeannie Hill, for example. Uh, I'm sorry we couldn't have that in this re-recording. But everybody who watched the one last week, this has better sound, potentially more information, and certainly yeah. that big announcement in this penultimate slide of moving from schema to the merchant feed is absolutely huge that we didn't have last week. So thank you so much, Dorit. You get the outro song and a goodbye. Thank you, Nissan. A quick goodbye to end the show. Thank you, Dorit. It was lovely talking with you again. Thanks, Jason. Thank you. Thanks a lot. And thanks, everybody, for watching. This was WordLift Monthly Roundtable. We'll be having another one next month, so please do join us for that. CaliCube. It's all about your brand.